Hello, my lovelies! Jenny O here, and we are continuing our Let's Play of East Shade. Now, between the last Let's Play and this Let's Play, there's about four hours of the day, so I decided to run around and uh, grab some stuff out in Easterly that you'd already seen to add to our um, inventory. So, I have some boards and some feathers and some roots and some sticks and some, some of the bloom sacks. Now the um, the items will respawn. It was just I didn't think you wanted to watch me run around, you know, like a chicken with my head cut off. That's no fun for anybody. So let's uh, go ex start exploring outside of Lindau into Easterly. Um, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. 6.17 a.m. Nobody's here at the bar. So it is now a bright sunny morning and you can keep track of the time by looking for the sun and how close it is to the uh, our moon is there once a uh, once our stationary object once we get pa out there this past the station you know once we can get a coat maybe we'll be able to see that stationary object in the night sky so ooh, pretty fountain Alright, so let's take this wooden this wooden and dirt path outside of Easterly and go take a look around the forest and see if there's anybody we can meet out here at 6.30 in the morning. Yes, the time does go a lot faster once you um, do that event. <laughs> so here we are. Here's a nice little forest. Oh, and there's somebody with, well, there's a hint, oh, here's somebody reading a book. How, oh, the life goals, an owl person, a fellow owl person. All right. So let's talk to him. There's nothing like a good book on a day such as this. Actually, books are the perfect way to spend any day. Do you enjoy reading? I do. I'm glad to hear that. Perhaps I can share my favorite books with you sometime. I like that. My favorite books are the ones that inspire me to write myself. How about you? Personally, yes, but for the purposes of this game, um, I am not much I of see. a writer. We creatives, me a writer, you a painter, we've got to stay inspired. Best way I've found is to drink many, many cups of tea. Always gives me a boost. Yes, but what type of tea? Speaking of writing, if you find any feathers around here, I'd happily buy them. I'm constantly losing my quills. I figure three should do it. I have three feathers. Oh, wonderful. Hopefully this is enough to last me a while. Thank you very much. I do hate scouring the forest floor for these. If you find any more, I'll pay you one glowstone apiece. Is there something else? So... Um, if you have feathers, you can sell them to him for one glowstone, which is cool. If, um, pick a topic. Lindau. Lindau used to be right on the river until a mudslide destroyed most of the town. After that, the townspeople relocated to the coast. Nava. Many of the folk from old Lindau moved there after the mudslide. The library there is of a historic note. Oh, right, and the architect of Linda. Ah, that would be Azad. A brilliant, brutally honest, and highly misunderstood man. Undoubtedly too curt for his own good. Perhaps that's why many Lindau folk found it difficult to maintain amicable relations with him. Hmm, okay. Well, thank you. See you later. He has a lovely, nice little hammock over there. Um... Uh, and over here, there's a rope on, on some sort of stand. Don't know what that's about yet. I guess we're gonna we'll, we'll find out eventually. But the road does go past onward, past him, and follow it down. Oh, and there's a nice river. So, kind of, you can follow this fence down to the river bank with all the pretty pink flowers. What's going on? And then, um, 
with some cattails, and there's a there's a cute kind of house over there on the other side of the river. Here's a bench. Oh, and we've got a man fishing. What does he want? Oh, fishing in the early morning. And look at that water. Isn't that lovely? Hi. Well, are you? Newcomer, are you? Trying to get across the bridge, I guess. I hope you've got the glowstones for it. It's not free, you know. The rule is you pay once and you can use it as much as you'd like. Well, what do you do here? I'm a, I'm a fisher. I catch fish, I cook fish, I sell fish. You know. <laughs> but mostly what I do here is fish. Sometimes I like to visit town, but not very often. What's all that you're carrying? Looks heavy. Are you some kind of painter? Yes, I am. Hmm. You know what? Maybe there's a way you can get the ghost stones out of me after all. Oh, really? There's a gazebo in Lindau. Real pretty spot. Maybe you've been there. Anyway, I'd like a painting of that view. Well, we can, uh, I will paint it for The gazebo you. is easy to find. It's just behind the inn. And I want the painting from the gazebo, not of the gazebo. It's the view, not the building, if you get my meaning. Damn oh. fish aren't biting today. Ugh, <sighs> that's sad. If you're still willing to paint, see you around. All right, so he wants you to paint him a picture of the gazebo. That's a nice one. All right, and then over here is the Tollstone Bridge Tops. So it has a toll of 60 glowstones. And we actually, I believe, technically do have it. We have 76 glowstones. But we still got more places to explore. So let's go keep exploring and keep looking around. Um, I need to remember who. Okay. So we can go up this. This is a very pretty stone thing. And we can keep our eyes open for collectibles on the way. But let's go out here. Alright, so that will take us back to Lindau. Oh, and over here are some, some roots, so let's, let's pick up those roots. But we don't want to go back to Lindau just yet. It's too early in the morning to go back out. And we don't, you know, we'll have to make that painting. We'll have to remember we're making a painting of feathers to sell to the feather guy. Um, I was in Lindau. But yeah, we have, this is another nice road, and it's kind of leading us back to where we started. We can go uh, to Ingao's cave there, but there is a tower over here. So let's see if we can go take a look at this tower. Let's get to there. We go. Because this road is going to take us straight to the tower, parallel to the road. So here we are, and we're going. Oh nope, that was too far down. Definitely too far down. Alright, so we want to get off here. We'll go over here to the, this tower. Take a look. The abandoned tower. Well, so that gives us some inspiration. A little bit, not a lot. So it takes about one inspiration. And it's locked. Alright. To get, um, to make a painting, it takes about one inspiration. So let's go back down here, down here, and then continue along the road to a, well this looks a little sad, what happened, this must be old Lindau, where they had the mudslide, and people had to move to the coast. So, look, there, there's all sorts of... Oh! More inspiration, that's good. We need inspiration. We want to be able to paint things. Um, I think this is very sad. Let's, put, let's take a look around and see if we can get into places. And if there's anything around here. Oh, there's some boards. We can always use boards. Let's see, there's... There's that house up there, it looks like. Um, and...
some boards, a candle, another candle. I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm avoiding candles this time. Some fabric. Oh, not a, not a, the water fox. So I, I, I think that's supposed to be like a Nyada. Nyada, I guess. Celius laid out his blanket in a patch of sunlight. His water fox, Nayara, sniffed about, searching for the nest of eggs to snack on. His stomach growling, he pulled a sachet of frosted biscuits and berry wine from his pack. Nayara howled in excitement. She'd found a nest. With a quick crunch, she cracked into the egg, hungrily lapping out the contents before batting the empty shell inside. Celia's grimaced as she started on her second egg, as charming as he found water foxes. He couldn't stomach their eating habits. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. So water foxes like eggs. Hmm. Oh, and here's another book. You know, this there is a lot of books in this very supposedly abandoned house. <laughs> Property of Yulia Greyring. It's been raining for several weeks now. Tons of water pouring down in a constant torrent. Our home is filled with buckets to catch spills from the ever-growing leaks. How I long for a moment of clear sky, and a break from the incessant drip, dripping, as I try to sleep. Dot, dot, dot. Disaster has struck. Last night, just after the eclipse, the red feathers woke to a creaking and groaning. They grabbed their children and ran outside moments before the house split from its stilts and crashed into the river below. Madame Baker has ordered an evacuation of all of Lindau until they can fortify our homes against this awful wet. Oh, dot, dot, dot again. Oh, terrible news. And only a day after we evacuated our homes and made camp on high ground, the entirety of our happy village has sloughed off into the river. Nearly half the hillside broke from the mainland in a huge gush, taking our homes down with it. What a horrible thing the weather has cast upon us. Oh, that is awful. How, how terrible. Well, it doesn't seem to be anything. There's a bed. You know, this place looks rather used for being abandoned. Maybe somebody will know why. So let's... Hmm. Well, not seeing much else quite yet. Let's go to the end here. Is there... Anything else here? Go along path. Well, well, this path appears to take us back to the other bigger path that we were just on. We've gained some inspiration and uh, grab some some stuff, stuff, like stuff it, and. Back to the path. You know, I'm, I'm curious. Let's let's go talk to the owl again. Because he likes books, and that home was filled with lots of books. Okay. We are in the stone path leading to the bridge, leading past the fisherman to the, the wooden path near the dirt path. Once. So, no, I mean, is that your house? Is he still. There's the hammock. He's still reading. Alright. Pick topic. Old Blingo. That's where I live. When I'm not camping. My house was the only thing standing after the mudslide. Why don't you move to the new, new Lindo? Moving all those books just seems like too much trouble. Besides, what could be more fun than living in a ghost town? Okay. I think I saw your I'm certain you did. Did you manage to take a peek inside? <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, good. I hope you found something to read that was of interest to you. Yes, I found some lovely books. Um, all right. And do we have any more feathers to sell? Yes, we have one set feather to sell. Let's close. Um, da -da. Let's go. There was the. He wants a picture of the gazebo. Let's go take a picture from the gazebo. 
paint a picture. We have enough inspiration, we can do that. And... Lenny certainly does love running around being a crow. So, the, from the, the view from the gazebo is of these, um, it's of, of the bluffs. And, let's see. Uh, he doesn't want the gazebo, he wants it from the gazebo. So let's, make see if we can get, yeah, that looks, that's a nice picture, I think. So let's go in and let's make a canvas. So we don't have any canvases, and we can paint. And we can drag and adjust, and then select E. So the art for the fisherman. So he like he. I hope he likes that. I mean, you can see the you can see the window a little in the distance. What time is it? So let's go out and look. It's Almost time for the eclipse again. Halfway through the day. So we can possibly get across the river and see if there's anybody across the river. Actually, so I think it might be faster to go use the other. Watch me soar like a bird! Oh, yes. You soar like a bird. Soar like a bird. Take an eagle to the sea. Okay. <laughs> and this is a very, you know, fleshed out little area. Isn't it? Lots of different colors. Moss on the rocks. The lichens. Here he is, standing, looking for... Well, looky here, you've gone and painted the gazebo view. Are you willing to sell it? Sure, yes. Well, how about that? Got myself something fancy. <laughs> it's very fancy. Right. Damn fish aren't biting today. Oh, that's Thanks good. again for that. See you around. So he doesn't have anything else more to say to us, I guess. And we don't have any feathers. But we have enough glowstones now, so we can now pay the toll to cross the bridge. Oh, here goes the uh, eclipse. So now we can cross the bridge over to the other side of the river. And what do you look at that? Mm. And I really do appreciate how the sky changes color as the eclipse goes. It, it really does help you keep track of the time as you're going through the game. And this, and this is just the most adorable little house. And I'm going to, there's a book on the table. There's some boards here. Let's read the book. What is the book? A Botanist Guide to Egypt, third edition. Crassula natinatus. Commonly known as Bloomsack, is native to the Lindau region of East Shade. The blossoms of the Bloomsack are fully enclosed and filled with a mixture of air, vi viscous sap, and seeds. Upon reaching the full size, the blossoms fall to the ground and split open, allowing for reseeding. If prepared correctly, the sap may be consumed as a beverage, often referred to as Bloomsack tea. The blossoms develop a hard skin when harvested, making them ideal for use. Exploitation devices. Okay. <laughs> you wanted flotation device? We'll have to have some bloom sacks. We got some boards. Boards are very important. And it looks like we can go in the house. Yes. Here we are. Going into the house. Oh, owner's house. And we got a nice little fire over here. We gain some more inspiration so we can. If we wanted to do three paintings, we could do three paintings. And he's got, um... I do want to uh, point out how really nice all these little kind of, um... 
medieval assets are. They're kind of, you know, it, it, you know, the pottery is actually fairly accurate. The, you know, stuff like that. There's two, there's two beds in here. Another candle if you, if you were being a, a candle thief. <laughs> but, um, one more. Let's, let's, oops. <laughs> Let's not get a heart hit in the nose with the, with the, the door. <laughs> Hitting him in the noise, nose in the door is not fun. So, who is this guy squatting down? What is he doing? No, oh, hello okay. there. Mind the plants underfoot. What can I do for you? Oh, look, he's wearing sunglasses. Isn't that grand? So what do you do in these shape? I spend a lot of time studying and documenting new plant life. Just yesterday, I believe I discovered a new sort of lily pad. Well, I, that would be good. Um, pick a topic. Linda. We've got great plant diversity, and I can always get imported teas from the storehouse. We've also got more wild bloom sacks than anywhere else. That's good. All right, so Nava. Believe it or not, I've never been. I'm not sure Bojan would care much for the bustle. Well, who's Bojan? It's the architect. As far as I know, he left Linda a long time ago and never returned. Unfortunately, he and I did not get along terribly well. Oh, oh dear. Well, I hear that's uh, common with him. I like him. to go walking over there. It's nice to take in the sea air from time to time. Oh, okay. The old Linda. It was destroyed such a long time ago. I was only a child, so I barely remember what it looked like. Oh, that's, oh my dear. That's sad. Um... Goodbye. Mind the plants underfoot. Mind the plants. Um, Hello again. What can I do for you? Oh, um, um, I spend a. Okay. Goodbye. Mind the plants underfoot. Mind the plants. Okay. Yes, we shall mind the plants. We shall mind the plants underfoot because we shall um. We are looking for branches, and mosses, and twigs. All right, so there, here's la, a la, la. here's a strange-looking fellow sitting on a bunch of bloom sacks, which indeed do make a good flotation device. So let's talk to him. This is Bojon. Hello, Bojon. He's saying dot dot dot. What are you sitting on? <laughs> it is a bloom sack raft. Oh. It looks quite peculiar. It does not. It looks quite nice, if you ask me. I made it, after all. Oh, yes, you did. Will you teach me how? I might, but only if you meet the right requirements. Uh oh <laughs> Dot, dot, to dot. Okay. My only requirement is that you be my friend. One of my best friends, to be exact. <laughs> of course. Maybe we should get to know each other a bit. Of course, I think we'll be great friends, and I don't think that's a good idea. Maybe we should get to know each other a bit. I understand. Quite reasonable. Let us begin learning about one another. Alright. Is your favourite colour orange or yellow? <laughs> Neither of those is my favourite. Mm, I see. Now, now, if you had to choose between eating slugs or cakes... Which would you eat? Um, I guess I'd rather eat cakes. Maybe I could make you some slug cakes. Oh dear. <laughs> this next one will be tricky. Uh-oh. If you saw a frog stranded all alone on a lily pad, what would you do? Um, leave it be, I believe. <laughs> that is rather heartless. Don't let the frogs hear you speaking that way. <laughs> I feel as if I have come to know you very well. Would you agree that we can be friends now? Yes. I don't see why not. Oh, wondrous. Here, now we can sit on rafts together. <laughs> You'll need some twine to keep it all together. I don't know how to make that, but owner has a lot of it. Thank you, Bojan. You also need wax. And that's very hard to find. Sometimes the stale candles. 
But don't tell her, no. <laughs> yes, let's not tell our friend here that he, um, he steals wax. So, the bloom sack, you need sealant stick twine and a white bloom sack. So, you, you need wax for the sealant, but the wax candles are not actually the sealant. <laughs> so, okay. But we, we'll have to let's let's go talk to um owner again, and because he might know about twine. Where was he? He was he was he was outside his house. Yes, he was. Hello again. Hello again. I overheard your conversation with Bodan. He'll be so excited to have <coughs> you as a friend. He's a very special individual. <coughs> There's no one who loves rafting as much as he does. Though he can be difficult at times, he's a kind soul. I appreciate your cordialness. Not a problem. So the blue, um, the blue here is necessary talking, <laughs> necessary responses. So how can I make twine? Ah, a blossoming botanist, I see. To start, you'll need some roots. You can find them at the bases of trees. I can show you how to make twine, but it is a process. I see you're a painter. I would so love some artwork in my home. All I'm right. quite partial to sandy beaches. So he wants a... What do you say? If you make me a painting, I'll teach you how to make twine. I look forward to seeing your work. Well, that seems reasonable. All Mind right. the plants underfoot. Mind the plants. No, that almost sounds like the game is afoot. All right, what time is it? Well, it's one seventeen p.m., and he wants a painting of a sandy beach to get us some twine. So I think we can um, I think we can handle that. That's not too bad. That's not too far away. So let's go down. You know, there's a sandy beach by Ingov. Um, da -da 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 -da. And look at all these little, like, there, there's actually little fluffy particles in the air. And then, and I want to, um, I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down to, through window and see if I can find the rats. Because I was wandering around, and I looked down earlier, and I looked down, and there was some, just some rats scuttling around. So I want to see if I can find those and show them to you. <laughs> it's just, you know, the, the little details. And look, look, there's a black chicken! A black chicken! You know what? You know, I'm gonna have to remember that. <laughs> Get a painting of the black chicken. Um, so here we are. It's, this is the, the, the path we first came in on. And I don't know, is it too early or too late in the day? Oh, here's a branch. Take the branch. Never know how many times you're gonna need some branches. I really don't know how we're carrying everything. <laughs> I mean, those boom sack were pretty big. I get. Hmm. I know there's some rats, but sometimes, I, I don't know, they, they're on this little loop, so sometimes we can see them, sometimes we can't. So here we are, we have a sandy beach, the ocean, um, she likes this type of thing. So let's, let's make a painting of it. I mean, it might be better during the daytime, but... You no, know, we're here now. It might be better in the early morning, but we're here now, so let's let's make a canvas. Make a painting of Sandy Beach. Yeah, let's do that. That that, that looks good. Look. There's the waves, there's the beach, there's the shipwreck. Looks good to me. Alright. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it much further past that him today. You know, before it gets too too late. Cause if you stay out past six six, seven o'clock, the you start getting cold. You don't wanna be cold. Where are they? Like skipping around. 
I don't know. Where is this area somewhere? I swear. There's some little rats. The zip strike pot. Oh, there's some there's some roots. So we can make more time. And the bloom sack. Bloom sack tea, I guess. I mean we can't make tea until we have a teapot. We got a teapot. Very strange. Alright. Back on the path. Back in the window. So. The black chicken! I thought I was going to make a baby of that. Yes, I, you know, sometimes I am dreadfully predictable. <laughs> I thought there might be roots there, but there's not. In the beginning of the game, you do have to conserve your inspiration levels. Um, you do have to conserve your inspiration, so you, you're trying to, you only want to really make the paintings that they ask of you, that the NPCs ask of you, and like commissions. Run, 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 run as fast as you can. Oh, there he is. He's kneeling again. What a lovely sandy beach you've painted. Would you be willing to give it away for the opportunity to learn? <sighs> sure. <laughs> this is splendid. It will be the prized piece of my sitting room. Now, here's how to make twine. Thank you. Mind the plants underfoot. So we received the twine. And now we can make twine for our, our raft. You know, we need... We need to make two twine, so one, two twine, so we would have enough to make our raft. But we don't have any sealant. So we'll have to find a way to get sealant. Hmm. Alright, what time is it? It is 3.30, so let's keep going for a little bit. And, uh, come here to this lovely area with lots of low pink growing bushes. Oh, some more, some more roots. And there is a little house, a very country house. Huh. Let's go knock on the door, or in the case of this game, just walk right in. <laughs> knock, knock. Anybody home? Oh, look, boards. Hey, this is kind of funny. She's sitting right there. We're, we're stealing her boards. All right. Hello. I saw some birds flying around a few nights ago. They were so so graceful. Oh, really? I especially like the ones that do this. Ooh, ooh. What a fun way to talk. Ooh. All right. Nava. Fancy, fancy city folk. But they do buy my pots. All right. So Anita seems to be a... Bye now. Seems to be a potter. Oh, she doesn't seem to have any sort of potting. No, oh, she does have a potting reel. There it is. And um, it's in her, her dishes and stuff. I wonder where her kiln is. Does she have a kiln outside? I mean, that would be the place to put it. There it is. Yes, it's on the other side of the oven. All right. So let's say J for journal. So mother's last wishes. The prank of Prasties. So he, we have to get to novel for that, I guess. The unsuitable parent to, to tell the sheriff. The architect of Lindau. 
in Benatar and a rare bird. And Nico, a woman living just south of the Great Shade, expressed her interest in a bird with a distinct boot. Well, okay. Well, we'll see. Maybe we'll find a bird with a distinct toot. What will we do when we find that bird with a distinct toot? I don't know. Who toot? <laughs> Who toot? What is it with these games and owls? Alright, uh, here we are. Okay, so here is the East Shading Black Thistle. Protected under the rule of law. Do not pluck or pull. So, yes. This is one of those places where you watch us to literally save your game. Um, I don't say it's easy to pick these things. It would be super easy to pick them if you were if you're running around just clicking everywhere. Um, but you do not want to pick the black thistle. That is the one thing in this game you do not want. <laughs> you want everything else but the black thistle. Um, so, oh, some more roots. But the black thistle, thankfully, are very distinctive. And, uh, you know, if you're careful, <laughs> you are a careful person, you, you know, oh, there's a mushroom. Yes, that is a mushroom. If you're a careful person, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't pick any of them up. There's, there's some stuff around here. I know there's stuff around here. Oh. So there's like what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm just I'm just looking. There's another mushroom. So stuff is kind of random but kind of not at the same time. And it will respawn. It does respawn. But the mushrooms not mushrooms. Oh, okay, we were we're here. So you should not have a problem with picking up the black thistle as long as you're not run as long as you triple check, you know, everything you're looking at. Like, you know, this is a stick, it's not a thistle. So let me see if I can find you with thistle. Thistle thistle thistle. Thistle thistle. Wait, okay. So this here is the black thistle. Do not pluck it. You do not want to pick it. Nothing. This is the one thing in the game <laughs> that you do not want to be a kleptomaniac on. Okay. Oh, look. Okay. Here are some eggs. And water foxes like eggs. Huh? All right. And there's another thistle. You don't want that thistle. Let's go talk. Let's see. Let's continue our little walk. Because, um, what time? It's 524. Oh, oh, okay. All right, since we're close by, we'll talk to him. Let's talk to this guy. We have a bear mindlessly digging on the path. All right. I'm pretty busy, if you couldn't tell. I've got all these trails to maintain, tourists to wrangle, animals to nurture, plants to relocate. I'll be lucky if I ever get to take another break in my whole life. Wow. Sounds like a tough job. Yeah, it is. At least someone understands what goes into making a national park. <sighs> I'm just really stressed today. Oh dear, what's oh, wrong? And I've also got to go rescue a stupid water fox. As if I didn't already have enough work to do. A stupid water fox. What is a water fox? They're aquatic rodents, essentially. Like to live in watery caves. People think they're adorable, but in my opinion, they're just wretched. Oh dear. My responsibility here is maintaining the trails. That's why I was hired. These water foxes are a huge thorn in my paw, and they distract me from my real tasks. Oh. My partner was the one who took care of the water foxes. Now he's gone, and I have no idea to handle these animals. I've been trying to trap one all day. Tried every type of bait into the moon. Where did your partner go? He wanted to see the world. I don't blame him for that. But he could have at least left some instructions for taking care of these hard animals. Good thing we read books. What do you need to trap them? One of them mangled his foot, and I was trying to administer some salve before it gets infected. Alright. Mm -hmm. I've already wasted so much time trying to catch him. I really can't spend another day on this. I think it's officially a lost cause. What will happen to the water fox? Yeah. He'll probably die. 
and his kits won't last long without him either. I guess it's sad, but the trails need maintenance. Well, okay, can I go see them? I'm not really supposed to let visitors get so close to the wildlife, but I guess it doesn't matter at this point. The water foxes are living in a cave, not more than a hundred paces from me. Alright. Pick a topic and Nava. Mmm, city folk. It's like they've never seen a trail before. Always trampling through the foliage like animals. <laughs> a little ironic. Alright, Mr. Bear. Uh, Alright, trampling through the foliage. Uh, okay. So there's a trail over here. Actually. Because he's so mad, let's stick to the trail as much as we can. As much as there is one. And there, um, there's a mushroom along this path. And here's a cave for the for the water foxes. Alright. So let's the water fox in. And this is gonna get a little dark. And I'm sorry I can't do really much about that. I mean I think I can turn my contrast up a bit so we can see. And here's the water fox. Oh running away. Alright, so here's a trap. Let's interact with the trap and we'll go. We have an egg, so let's set the egg in here and we'll back off and see what happens. Here comes the water fox, if you can see him. He's right there in the middle of the screen. He's headed towards the box. Oh, oh he wants the egg. And we got him! We got him! Okay, where's the bear? Bear, we got the bear. Here he comes! You managed to trap him! I heard the shrieks all the way above ground! I need to administer the sound. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Yes. Alright. Let's administer that. And notice how his voice echoed like he was actually in a cave? We were in the cave, and there, now, there it goes. Well, I guess I should thank you. I was ready to give up on this damned water fox. Mm. Listen, it's pretty clear that you're a nature lover. I don't know how you managed to catch that animal, but I do appreciate it. By reading a book. Let me show you how to make a snug tent. Should be useful for someone like you. Roaming the country and all. It will give you a place to relax if you need to kill time, and shelter if you find night sneaking up on you. Thank you. So we received a tent schematic. And actually the tent is really useful if you need to do something at a specific time, and you don't want to wander around and uh, do stuff. You know, in that time period, but it is getting six o'clock, and we don't need to make a tent right now because we're actually pretty close to another area, to another inn. Let's go up the hill. There's a, there was a building past Victor, which you know I didn't actually point out, but let's see, there's a building up there, and that is an inn. <laughs> so we can grab this branch, and we will go up to the inn. I think we're going to call it an e uh, a, a day once we get to the end and get ourselves a room. And um, after that, we can go. We will see. We can explore here beyond the end and you know, continue our adventure in East Shade. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to the Kestrel's Eyrie. More inspiration! Yay! Alright, let's talk to him. All these little cats! Welcome to the Castrel's Eyrie, providing a warm bed for travelers and tourists for just two glowstones a night. Are you in need of a room tonight? Yes. I'll take a room. Alright then. It's just up the stairs, second door on the right. And, you know, might as well talk to My him. My great-great-grandparents built this lodge. It's held up pretty well, I'd say. With any luck, it'll stay up for many more generations. It's a nice looking place. So let's talk about Lindo. You might have met my old friend Nika. She runs the inn over there. We used to get into a lot of trouble together. Oh. Nava? It's a shiny kind of place. You heading there now? No, we're going to our bed. No. I heard there's an art supplies store. Seems like something you might like. Yes, that'd be handy, you know. You have to get canvases. Oh, there's a book. The Fish of Bell's Dream River. Good to know. The scales of the ultramarine minnow were once 
ground down into to create a deep blue pigment used in paint. These fish consume nearly anything aside from fish, and have been found to eat plants and even eggs. The mudded mud dud trout or thunder trout leaps from water at high speeds before crashing back down. It is believed that the fish do this to catch flies. But has been surmised that they may also be engaging in play. And then entire hovers of thunder trout do this at once, it creates a rumble that can be felt from land. Thunder trout prey on ultramarine minnows and prefer to live in river waters. You get a blue fish, a green fish, and an orange fish. And the next one is the, the dry mouth sandfish, the orange fish, swallows vast quantities of silt, allowing it to rest heavily on the riverbed. Preying on thunder trout, the sandfish emits a burst of sand as prey approaches, disorienting the smaller fish and consuming it along with the displaced sand. One sandfish has gained particular oops, one sandfish has gained particular notoriety in East Shade for being a menace to fisher folk and boaters. This fish is known to locals as old pops it has been observed wreaking havoc in the sink wood lake. Ominous. That's we we will have to remember that these two things. Oh, we got somebody over here. Reading book? You know, they really like reading in this game. I, I mean, as a person who is addicted to books and writes books, I actually really love that. It's like, everywhere I turn, people are reading. Oh, and look, there's a candle on the mantle, just in case you need it. And a wagon wheel candle thing. Ooh, and the, the candles are even lit. How nice. So there are two doors here. The second door on the right is the one for your bedroom. The first door has a has is another bedroom and it has somebody pacing around by trade i am a cartographer oh, but unfortunately my productivity is down at the moment i have run out of ink it'll be a while before my shipment comes in okay she's running you around here right i'll bet you could use a map of east shade a map would be lovely <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like one, I have an extra print here I can give you. But in exchange, I'm wondering if there's something you can do for me. Uh, I can't remember what that As I mentioned, I'm running low on ink. If you find me four inky cap mushrooms, I'll give it to you. I'll keep an eye out. That would be grand. Last time I went inky cap foraging, I got trapped in a conversation with the park ranger. He's rather obsessed with trail making, isn't he? He gabbed about it for nearly an hour. I think... A beautiful city. And very straightforward, cartographically speaking. Well, that's good. That's good. It's always good to be able to get your way around. See you. So... We have three. We are one short. Doesn't that figure? All right. So, but it's getting late to be inky cap hunting, and there we are at the bedroom. And there's some fabric here. Oh, and another candle in case you're wanting to be a candle thief. All right. So that will be this episode of Let's Play East Shade. Thank you for coming on my little adventure, helping save the water fox, and, you know, getting the schematic so we can have our own bumpy raft. Maybe we will be able to sit with Bojan a bit once we get some sealant. Take care of yourself, bless, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.